Good morning, Flat Rock and Central United Methodist Churches. This is Pastor Imelda Ramos, and I invite you to watch the New Year's Sermon by our Bishop of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference, Bishop Frank J. Beard. First, let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into the world as we start this new year, 2021, I pray that you bless us with a new sense of beginning. We lift up to you, O oh God, all of our concerns, all of our prayer requests this week. I pray for those who are grieving, those who have lost a loved one this week. Especially, we pray for the Kilburn family, for the passing of Bev. Gilburn, I pray that you grant us your peace and your comfort and that you surround us with your love, knowing that you have promised to us the promise of eternal life and your resurrection. Thank you, Jesus, that we are assured of your presence with us, especially during this hard week at the nation's capital. I pray that you save your people, O oh God, and bless your inheritance. Help us to do our part so that as United Methodists, Christians, and followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we can contribute what we can so that the rule of law and order shall prevail in our land. I pray that greater love and life and liberation shall be shared by all in this whole wide world so that the peace and goodness and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ shall prevail. This is my prayer in Christ's name. Amen. I greet you today in the wonderful name of Jesus, the reigning King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. He's the sovereign head over all that is that includes your life and mine. And the good news is that he's available to meet you at the very point of need. Well, my name is Frank Beard, and I'm the bishop of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference. And it is a joy and a privilege to be able to come and to assist my good friend, uh, Roger and Brenda Grimmett, as they uh, are ministering before you and the rest of the pastoral staff there as well. Uh, would you bow your heads for a word of prayer with me? Lord, I pray that you would bless me now to be able to preach your word with boldness and with power and with courage and with the unction of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that as we begin this new year, you would help us all to realize that we can begin again. Thank you in Jesus name, amen. Well, that is very true. You can begin Again, uh, one of the reasons I like playing golf, and I am not a golfer, I am a fisherman, but I like playing golf because I have friends that I golf with, they allow me to take mulligans. I like mulligans. Now, I, I don't know the rules of golf very well. I don't think you're supposed to take them on every hole, but they let me take as many mulligans as I need because I'm such a lousy golfer. A mulligan is a do-over. It's a chance to make a better shot to improve on the one that you just messed up and shanked into the water or cut into the weeds or the, or the tall grass or even the sand trap or lost it in the woods. I like the fact that in golf, there is such a thing as a mulligan. All of us like to think that we could get another chance, a second, a third chance, a fourth chance. I like knowing that at the year, at the close of one year and the start of another is a good time for me to reassess where I am spiritually. And there are so many times when I have to ask God to forgive me and ask for a do over. Well, the good news is you can begin again. First John one nine reminds us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a fancy way of saying that God delights in giving do overs. God delights in granting us mulligans. God delights in giving us a second chance. 
And for me, again, a third, a fourth, and a fifth chance. As many times as we come with true confession and true repentance, God forgives us and cleanses us. There is nothing that God won't forgive. Well, Jesus in Luke chapter 15 tells a story. And actually, it's a multifaceted story. He starts out talking about a woman who had a precious coin that was lost. And somehow, this lady lost the coin. And she did everything that she could to retrace her steps and find that coin. Now, I've lost my keys around the house, so I I understand uh, what she was going through. Don't always understand the significance of those coins. Scholars have talked about them. People have written books about them. The, The thing that I get out of it is that it was lost. It was out of place. And so this lady swept her house. She lit a lamp. She swept her house. And finally, she found her coin. And when she found it, she went on Facebook, right? And she uh, published a picture of her coin next to her big award-winning smile. And she said, that coin that I lost, I found it. And there was much rejoicing in her household and among her Facebook friends. So the lady found her lost coin. Jesus then tells a parable about a, a farmer, a shepherd that went out. This shepherd went out. At the beginning of the day, he had 100 sheep. And at the end of the day, after taking them to water and grazing them and allowing them to walk around and roam, at the end of the day, the shepherd counted the sheep and realized that there was 99, that there was one that was lost. So rather than say, well, that's just the way it goes. You win some, you lose some, some get wiped out. The, The good shepherd left the 99 in the pen, retraced his steps throughout the day, And finally, he he heard a little bleeding of the lamb that was lost, and he looked, and it was caught in the thickets. And the shepherd went over, and he rescued that lost sheep, put it on his shoulders, and carried it back to the fold. And then he called all of the other herdsmen around and said, look, I found my lost sheep, and there was great rejoicing. That lost sheep was out of position, but it was found. Finally, Jesus tells a story, one that we're all familiar with. We've heard it so many times, the parable of the fellow who had two sons. And one of the sons said to his father, the younger one, he said, Dad, he says, I don't want to wait until you die for your inheritance. He said, I want whatever you have to give me. He says, I want it now. And his dad gave him the inheritance. That boy went down to check into cash and he liquidated all of his assets and got a boatload of money. And the Bible says he headed off for a distant country. And he went off not only in a distant country, but when he left his father's house, he left that way of living. His, his thing was, I don't have to live by those rules anymore. I can eat, drink, and be merry. I can party with whom I choose. And that's what he did. And as long as his money held out, he was the life of the party. He had lots of friends. The money started getting a little low, and so he started trying to get a little bit more conservative. But the Bible says a famine hit that land. A famine hit that land. And he ended up completely broke. His friends, when the money was gone, his friends were gone. And he didn't have any food, didn't have any place to live. And so the Bible says he went and hired himself out as a servant. And the only job he could get, because times were tough, the only job he could get were keeping pigs in a pig pen. He was so low. He had come from the place of a household where he never wanted for anything. And now here he was in a sheep pen up to his knees and pig yuck. The Bible says that he began to think about his plight. And when he came to his senses, I love that. When he came to his senses, he said, how silly is this? In my father's house, he has servants and they have bread enough to spare. They've got leftovers. And here I am thinking about eating the pig's food. Even the pods that he fed to the pigs started looking good to him. Boy, you know you're in a bad shape when the pig's food starts looking good. When I was a kid in rural Arkansas, my job was to slop the hogs. We had an old slop jar, 
now slop jars are two two varieties so the one in the kitchen was for food and and that um slop jar would get full of the leftover table scraps and my job was to take it in the bucket and take it out to the pig trough and to pour it in so the pigs would have food to eat that food never ever ever looked good to me so i can imagine this boy was really destitute he was down to his last prayer and that's what he did he said i know what i can do he says i can go home because in my father's house there's bread enough to spare and he said i've already burned that bridge i can't go back as a son now that's what he thought i can't go back back as a son but perhaps i can go back as a servant and so he says here's what i'll do he says i'll go home he says and i'll tell my father father i've sinned against you and I've sinned against God. He says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but if you'll make me one of your hired hands, if you'll give me a job, I'll, I'll work as hard, I'll be as diligent as, as humanly possible. I just need a job. And I, I know I burned the bridge and can no, no longer be your son, but I'll be the best servant you ever had. I need a do-over. I need a do-over. Now, I love, I love what it says next in Luke chapter 15 in this story of the, what we call the prodigal son. We use the word prodigal, which means extravagant. We think it means lost, but it actually means extravagant. This boy was extravagant in his request that he made to the father. He was extravagant in his living, and he's even extravagant in his plan to go back home. This boy said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get home. Now, I love what it says. Get this if you don't get anything else out of the message. It says, so he started out. And so he started out. You say, well, that doesn't seem like a whole lot. Oh, yeah, it is. Because a whole lot of us want to go places. A whole lot of us want to change things. A whole lot of us want to do better. But we never get started. You can't change until you actually get started. And the Bible says he started out. He started out, he got on his feet and he began to head towards home. Pig muck and all, he started walking home. Well, the eyes of love are keen and unbeknownst to him, his father was looking for him every single day. His father would go out and he would scan the horizon, wondering is today gonna be the day that I get to see my boy again? We're not told how many years transpired, how many months transpired. We're not told how much time elapsed, but we do know this, that one day the father saw him on the horizon. He looked out and he said, I think I recognize that walk. That looks just like my boy. And the father called one of his servants and he said, does that look like somebody you know down the road? Servant said, I don't know, I'm I'm not so sure who it is, but the father's eyes are keen. And the father's eyes are full of love. And he said, that's my boy. And the father started heading in that direction. I love that. I love that. Whenever we decide that we want to to turn things around, know that God is out looking for you long before you ever go on a God quest. Long before you ever. Why? Because you're out of place, you're out of position, and you're out of purpose. And God came to restore us in all three phases. God wants to restore us and get us in the right place. God wants to give us the right position and God wants us to fulfill our purpose. That boy was greeted by his father. And before he could rehearse his speech in his father's ear, his father was smothering him with hugs and kisses and saying, my son, my son, you've come home, you've come home. Listen, I, I, I was reading that passage the other day, and I thought, well, why didn't the father let this boy finish his speech? Now, I know this is true about God's character and nature. God's not so much interested in the words of contrition that you have to say. Now, confession is important. It, it is really important. But keep in mind now, God looks at the heart. And God, just like that loving parent, God sees your heart. And when you come home, it doesn't matter whether you have the right words or not. It could be as simple as, Lord, I messed up and I'm sorry. Lord, I've screwed things up. I've done it my way and it didn't turn out too right. It doesn't matter the words that you say. It matters your heart. 
That's what God is after. God wants your heart fully surrendered. And this boy's heart was broken and his father knew it. And so he didn't want times of speeches and contrition. He wanted his son to know that he was welcome back in the family. And so he turned to the servant and he said to the servant, he said, go. He says, I want you to get three things for me. He says, go home and get a ring. Go home and get a robe. Go home and bring some sandals for his feet. Bring some shoes for his feet and kill the fatted calf. We're going to have a party. What I really like about this story that Jesus tells is Jesus doesn't wait until he gets all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed and he gets a bath and he's, you know, put on some uh, cologne. No, 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 no. The father said, we've got time to do all that cleaning later. Right now we're going to celebrate because this son of mine, which was lost, is now found. He has been restored to his place. He's being restored to his position, and he's going to find out his purpose in Christ Jesus. That's the way it happens for us. That's how it happens. You can begin again. Let me deal with these three items, and then we'll close with a word of prayer. He took that ring. A ring was like a charge card. It could be used in the marketplace. And in the economy of the day, his father was saying, my trust in you is restored. I trust you. I trust you. He took the robe and he put it on. That was a family robe. And that meant that you belong. You belong. You are a part of this family. You don't have to be a servant. You are a part of the family. You're a part of this family. And he gave him a robe. And then he took shoes. I love this. I love this. In the ancient custom, only only, uh, free people had shoes. The servants didn't have shoes. Now, you could get to a place where you could buy your freedom, but the servants didn't have shoes. I love the old spiritual that came out of a part of my history. It says, you got shoes and I got shoes and all God's children got shoes. And when we get to heaven, we're gonna put on our shoes. Uh, Don't you love that? The shoes being you're a part of the family of God and you belong. So as you begin this new year, know that you can begin again. Whether you're lost, whether you're out of place, whether you're out of position, whether you're lost wondering what your purpose in life is, When you come to the Father, when you say, Lord, I'm coming home, I'm done with the past, I I need a mulligan, I need a do-over, I need a do-over. Well, let me tell you one more thing, and then I'm done. You, You all know, you've heard me say this before, that my favorite cartoon is a cartoon picture of Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace is getting ready for bed. He's got his cowboy hat on, he's got his... 10 star pinned to his pajamas. He's got his trusty six shooter strapped around his waist, but he's kneeling beside his bed. And the caption over his head simply reads, I'm here to turn myself in. I'm here to turn myself in. Isn't that the good way to start this new year? You can begin again. Why not now? It's time to get started. Let us pray. Merciful God, I pray that you would hear the cry of every heart in this place today, of people who want to start over, people who need a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, people who need a mulligan. And Lord, you're in the business of restoring hearts, restoring lives, restoring relationships, returning us, Lord, from broken dreams, to wholeness and health. And I pray, oh God, that you would bless every person today, especially those who say, I need to start again. And help us, Lord, to start anew in you. Thank you that you promise that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just. You'll forgive us of our sins and you'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your word says, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old has passed. Behold, the new has come. Do a new work in all of our lives. 
and help us, Lord, as we come home. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen.